Hey everyone, Dr. O'Neill here. I want to welcome you to Grow Gray Matter. This is part two of a video where I'm covering all the key medical terminology terms you need to understand the muscular system. So you can quit worrying about words and start focusing on ideas. Let's get our learn on. First, we have kinesi or kinesia, which means movement. So a couple of terms to help that stick. First, we have kinesiology. So kinesia means movement. Ology means the study of. So if you take a kinesiology class, you're studying movement. I like to say that in anatomy, we study the body when it's standing still. In kinesiology, we study the body when it's moving. So kinesiology, the study of movement. Next, we have an interesting one, dysdiadokinesia. So dys means painful or abnormal. Dia means complete. So this is actually saying an abnormal or an abnormal ability to complete a movement. Dysdiadokinesia. Abnormal, complete movement. So dysdiadokinesia is a problem with the cerebellum. And what you actually can't do is complete rapid alternating movements. So a simple test, if someone has this condition, they can't do something like this, where I'm just rapidly alternating movements, pronating and supinating my forearms. So dysdiadokinesia, abnormal complete movements, or the inability to complete normal movements. So those are examples of kinesi or kinesia, which means movement. Next, we have gram or graphy, which means a record or recording. So some examples to help that stick. Think mammogram. Mammo means breast. So a mammogram is a recording of your breast tissue looking for abnormal cell growth like breast cancer. Next example, an EMG, electromyography. So it's a measurement, graphy, of the electrical activity of your muscles. They actually run an electrical current through your muscles. It is painful to determine how well your nerves in that area are functioning. So an electromyography study is measuring or recording the electrical activity of your muscles. Last example, the EKG or ECG, which is the electrocardiogram. So electro, electrical activity, cardio, heart, gram, a recording. So the ECG, electrocardiogram is measuring and recording the electrical activity of your heart. Now, the reason it's often called an EKG, it was actually created in Germany, and that kind of pays homage to that fact. So it's actually an ECG, electrocardiogram. So those are examples of gram or graphy, which means something written or a record or a written record of some activity. So next we have rhabdo or rhabdomyo, which means striated skeletal muscle. A couple of words to help that stick. Rhabdomyolysis. So rhabdomyo means muscle. Lysis means to break down or split or tear apart. So rhabdomyolysis is when you have muscle damage and the cells are actually breaking down and releasing their contents into the bloodstream, which can have catastrophic implications at the kidneys. So rhabdomyolysis would be there's so much muscle damage that it can cause renal failure. So rhabdomyolysis. Next term, rhabdomyosarcoma. So oma means tumor. So a sarcoma is a cancer or tumor of the soft tissues. So a rhabdomyosarcoma would be a type of, of sarcoma that starts in skeletal muscle. So rhabdo or rhabdomyo means striated skeletal muscle. Next we have sarco, which means flesh. So a few words to help this stick to your gray matter. First think sarcophile. So file means to love or adore. 
Sarco means flesh. So a sarcophile would be anything that loves or adores flesh. So if you really like steak, I guess you'd be classified as a sarcophile. But the term is primarily used for animals like top carnivores, like lions. So in humans, uh, think sarcoplasm. So plasm means the material or formation. So the sarcoplasm would be what makes up your flesh. So in most cells, this would be called the cytoplasm. I like to think of the guts of the cell, everything inside the cell membrane. But for some reason, your skeletal muscle gets its own terminology. So instead of being called the cytoplasm, when it's a skeletal muscle cell, it is called sarcoplasm. Just like the endoplasmic reticulum of a skeletal muscle cell is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So sarcoplasm. Lastly, we have sarcoid. So oid means resembling or derived from. So if anything is sarcoid, that means it resembles flesh. So the first thing this makes me think of is sarcoidosis. So osis would be a disorder or a condition. So this would be a condition where your body is creating these lumps of tissue that resemble flesh. So it's actually a condition where inflammatory cells are clustering together throughout the body that create these sarcoids, this tissue that resembles flesh. So sarcoid and sarcoidosis is when something resembles flesh. So sarco means flesh. Real quick, what is your favorite word that uses one of these terms? What trick do you use to remember difficult terms like this? Leave a comment below to help your fellow students, and we will grow gray matter together. Next, we have fash or fashy, which means bundle. So if you want to get political, you could use the term fascism, which I think of a, a form of government that bundles resources together, but let's not go down that path. In the human body, think fascicle. So a fascicle is a bundle of skeletal muscle fibers that actually would then form larger units, which would be your muscles. So fascicle, think bundles of muscle. Then lastly, we have fascia. So fascia is a term that's being used a ton now over the last few years. So fascia is the connective tissue around your body structures that bundles them together. It's the reason that all your body water doesn't just you know, gravitate towards your, towards your ankles. It's what compartmentalizes your body. But fascia is also what connects every part of your body to everything else. So fascia, trust me, you're going to hear that word more and more in the future. It's a bundling or packaging material that holds your body together. So fash or fasci means bundle. Next we have tetan, which means stiff. So a couple of words to help that stick. Think tetany. So tetany or tetany seizures are involuntary muscle spasms that are caused usually by an electrolyte imbalance. It's usually a calcium imbalance, which is often caused by something wrong with your parathyroid gland. So tetany, think involuntary muscle stiffening. So tetany, stiff. Then we have tetanus. So tetanus, uh, some people call it lockjaw. So tetanus is an infectious disease actually caused by the toxin produced by a bacteria, Clostridium tetany. It causes violent muscle contractions, contractions so powerful that it actually can break your bones. And this is fatal without treatment. So tetanus is a condition of the stiffening of the muscles. So tetan or tetany, think stiff. Next we have fibro, which means fibrous. So a few terms to help that stick, think fibroblast. So a blast is like an embryonic or immature cell. So a fibroblast would be an immature cell that produces fibrous tissue. So fibroblasts are the cells that make scar tissue. Another example would be pulmonary fibrosis. So a condition of fibrous tissue invading the lungs. So basically healthy lung tissue is being replaced by scar tissue. So pulmonary, think lungs, fibrosis, condition of fibrous tissue. Lastly, we have fibromyalgia. So fibro, fibrous tissue, maya, 
means muscle. Algia means pain. So pain in the muscles and fibrous connective tissues. Fibromyalgia. Real quick, before we get to our weird word of the day, I'd like to ask you a favor. Please like this video if you liked it. Share this video if you loved it. Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to continue on this journey with me so we can crush your coursework and you can grow gray matter. All right, let's get weird with it. The term is sternutation. So this comes from the 1800s when people used to share snuff. So they would, they would snort snuff. I don't know a lot about snuff, but because of that, sternutation is a term that you can use that means the same thing as sneezing. So next time you sneeze, you can say, pardon me for sternutating. So sternutation means sneezing. Learning complex topics is hard. That's why they're called complex topics. But I hope this video showed you that I can help you, that I can lead you down the right path, that we can tackle this topic together, one video at a time, one step at a time, one synapse at a time, until you grow gray matter. But I'm going to do you a favor and throw in my 10-second productivity masterclass to speed this process along. So get your pen and paper ready. Step one, sleep when you can. Step two, caffeine for when you can't. And step three, I never get up. Now go change the world.